Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are continuing our series on the 2025 Problem Solving Modelling Task Update by looking at the new syllabus and how to solve. And we're looking at the criteria today, accurate use of mathematical knowledge. Now, before we get started, I wanted to tell you how you can engage further with us here at McClutchy Maths. You could consider liking and subscribing, following us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, tell us in the comments and consider super like, which is look for that little heart symbol on um, your screen and you can donate $2 to the upkeep of the channel. Okay, so here's our instrument specific marking guide. It's called the ISMG for short. And it's basically the performance criteria that you're going to be marked against. And solve looks quite different um, under the 2025 syllabus to how it looked in 2019. Um, and our focus today is on this part here, accurate use of mathematical knowledge for important aspects of the task. This is the top box of criteria here. Now in the old syllabus 2019, it was all about accurate use of complex procedures. This has simply been now translated into student friendly language um, because a lot of people aren't really sure what complex procedures are. So this is now focusing on what the mathematical knowledge is that's important to do the task. Okay, so let's look at some of the keywords in that phrase. Accurate, first of all, precise and exact to the point, consistent with exactly or conforming to a truth, a standard, a rule or a model, a convention or known facts, free from error and defect, meticulous and correct in all details. Now you'll notice that before it's accurate use of mathematical knowledge for important aspects of the task. So accuracy is being placed against the task parts that are the most important. What are they actually assessing? If you're doing an assignment on measurement, they're assessing your knowledge of measurement. If they're doing an assignment on bivariate data, they're assessing your knowledge of bivariate data. Now, I know that seems like it's stating the obvious. However, there are aspects of mathematics that come into different parts of assignment, things like rounding, um, things like units of measurement. Um, depending on your task, these things might be important aspects of the task, but for other parts of the task, if they're assessing you on bivariate data analysis, then your ability to round or your ability to show units of measurement are not the important aspects of the task. So this is really gonna be one of those ones where your teacher, again, will deem what's an important aspect of the task. They are also the ultimate judge of how accurate your work is as well. So little things like transposing numbers may not disadvantage you from being able to achieve the top standard. Now, you may not know what number transposing is. If on my calculator, the answer is 1,050, 1050, I might accidentally type into my assignment 1005. And then I might even continue carrying that error through all the way. Now, you could argue that's not accurate. However, if it's not the important part of the assignment, then it may not count against you. This is gonna be one of those things where the teacher is the ultimate judge. And personally, if it was the only mistake you made in the whole assignment, I certainly would not hold that against you because we're human, sometimes we type things back to front. We all do it. Okay, other minor issues could be things like rounding. Um, if the focus of your assignment is not to demonstrate your rounding skills, then this may not be something that may count against you. Or there might be one line with a minor error when you've transposed a formula. So for example, you might be solving an algebraic equation. You might have um, added something to both sides instead of taking it away from both sides. Your teacher may still be able to award you this if that's the only mistake you've made in the whole assignment and it's not an important aspect of the task, you might still be able to be achieving that top standard of accuracy if that's not the skill that's being measured. Okay, some major misconceptions of important knowledge, however, are definitely going to affect your grade. So this could include things like repeating mistakes with algebraic techniques. So if there's an important aspect of the task is for you to develop a model and substitute into the model and make a prediction from the model, then making lots of different types of mistakes with your algebraic techniques, that would definitely count against you and you would not be awarded that top performance mark there. Things like incorrectly identifying correlation, getting correlation, um, which is Pearson's correlation coefficient for year 12 students, getting that mixed up with the coefficient of determination. 
that's an important aspect of the task to be able to identify those accurately. And if you've done that incorrectly, that would definitely hold against you. Um, things like interpreting a graph or a measurement that you've come up with incorrectly. Interpretation is important and if that's inaccurate, then that could hold against you. So here are some synonyms for the word important. Um, main, chief, principal, key, major, salient, prime, dominant, foremost, supreme, predominant, paramount, overriding, cardinal, crucial, vital. Sometimes I find using synonyms helps me to really understand what a word means. And when it comes down to it, your teacher is going to determine what is the important aspect of your task. What are they actually assessing? And if you're wanting to know what this is, jump onto the syllabus. Now, if you're in grades 7 to 10, look up the Australian curriculum, ACARA, for your year level, and it will tell you what the key performance indicators are going to be for your year level. So if you're being assessed on trigonometry, for example, they're going to say in ACARA, in the curriculum, what they want you to be able to do. So you need to be able to demonstrate that in your assignment. That's the important part of your assignment. If you're in senior, look up the QCAA syllabus documents and they will tell you what you're expected to know how to do for that unit. If there's nothing in there about other things, for example, one of the classic ones for bivariate data for year 12, a lot of students get confused when there's an assignment about measuring different body parts, they will suddenly drift into the land of understanding the golden ratio. The golden ratio is not part of your syllabus. So I see students waste time calculating the ratio of different body parts and saying, well, the ratio needs to be 1.13 and what's my average ratio? No, that's not an important aspect of the task. It's not even in the syllabus, so don't go there. Um, you'll, you've got to remember this is coming from the 2019 syllabus where it used to be complex procedures and now it's all about important aspects of the task. Important aspects of the task are usually the complex parts of the curriculum. That's what we're assessing. So have a look at your syllabus. Be familiar with it. It's not just for teachers, it's for students as well. So have a look and see what is it that they're trying to get out of you for the assignment. What actual maths knowledge are you meant to be demonstrating? And if you're demonstrating that maths knowledge accurately, and it's definitely going to be an important part of the task, a crucial part of the task. Um, once again, we've talked about um, knowledge of trigonometry, if you're doing a junior assignment there, then doing a similar triangle proof is not going to be an important aspect of the task. It's not part of what you're being assessed on. Um, it might be a useful way to verify results by looking at similar, similar triangles because it's another mathematical area. Um, but calculating, for example, the area of the triangle or um, using Pythagoras' theorem, it might not be a relevant part of the task really depends on the context but it possibly isn't if you're being assessed on trigonometry so it's a good thing to get um, familiar with okay let's look at the ISMG again uh, we've talked about accurate already we've talked about important we've even talked about mathematical knowledge that's what your curriculum or your syllabus is explaining let's look at the aspects of the task it's plural again Okay, so that means that if you only do one aspect of the task, even if it's accurate, you can't score in the top band because most tasks will have multiple elements to them. So just once again, bivariate data, which is one of my favourite topics. Um, if you look at a bivariate, doc, um, bivariate data topic, you're looking at things like being able to create a scatter plot, being able to come up with the correlation, being able to interpret the coefficient of determination, being able to use your model um, and develop that model algebraically, being able to use it for predictions, being able to create a residual plot. That's five or six different aspects of that task. If you only do one part of that accurately, you're not going to score in the six to seven band. Okay. If you notice the difference here between this top descriptor and the second descriptor down, this one down is using mathematical knowledge. So you're going to score in that four to five range if you're not accurate. But also, if you only focus on accuracy for one aspect of the task, this one here is singular, this one here is plural. So if you're only getting accuracy on one aspect of the task, it's still going to be four to five there as well. Ways that you can improve your accuracy. First of all, thoroughly understanding your course content. This is another thing to do, is to go back to that syllabus. If you're not sure where to find it, ask your teacher, how do I look at the year 10 syllabus for maths? Or how do I look at... Um, the year 12 general math syllabus. Your teacher should be able to send you the link to that and then you can have a look through, find the topic that you're studying at the moment and make sure you've got a thorough understanding of the course content. If you don't, then you're going to find it hard to do the work or do the maths accurately. 
Now this might be a case because often when we hand out assignments, we're still teaching as we uh, progress with the assignment. Particularly when you're in senior, we can't stop for three weeks while you work on your assignment. So the work keeps rolling on. Now, what that means is sometimes you're learning the content as you're writing about it in your assignment. So it's a really good idea is to keep up with the homework that your teacher is assigning to you during that time. Try and get lots of practice with those simple familiar questions out of your textbook, because if you can do those on paper, um, without an assignment, then you'll be more likely to get accuracy on your assignment as well. So that's what we're talking about here is keeping up with that classwork and the homework before the assignment's issued and during the assignment as well. Check your work as well. Um, a lot of the time I'll see students will type things into their assignment and they never go back and revise it. It's a really good idea then to see and to check your work back. So things like considering a cross check with an online calculator or a spreadsheet. If you've done manual calculations on a calculator, a physical calculator in your hand, you could then go and try typing it into Excel, see if you come up with the same answer. Um, asking yourself, does the answer make sense? For example, if it's a measurement assignment or a trigonometry assignment, and you end up with the measurement of an angle or a side or a shape, and you end up with a, a negative number, then you know the answer does not make sense because you can't have negative side lengths and negative angles. So asking yourself if the answer makes sense is a really good place to start. Um, making sure you've shown all your steps of working as well. Um, I know a lot of us like to handwrite it and take a photograph of it, put it into the assignment. That's fine, but plagiarism checkers don't tend to read those. So your teacher may not consider that kind of working valid. It's a good thing to ask your teacher whether they're gonna accept that or not. I personally think if you use equation editor and type your assignment in, it actually even looks better as well. But once again, show all your steps of working so that you would not believe the number of times as a teacher that I mark an assignment and someone will say, and the prediction is 20 centimetres. And I'm like, well, where did that come from? Um, if you show all your steps of working, your teacher can see when you make a mistake, oh, it's a minor mistake. It's not actually an important aspect of the task, not gonna hold that against you. But if you've just come up with a wrong answer with no steps of working, no justification at all, then it's gonna be held against you. Okay, also, when you're using algebraic techniques, backtracking and substitution can be a really good way to check your work. What I mean by that is, let's say you've solved two simultaneous equations and you've come up with a solution um, that solves both equations at 0, 20. Um, the Cartesian coordinates, zero on the X and 20 on the Y. Now you might wanna then go, okay, that's my sub solution. I'm gonna now substitute X equals zero and Y equals 20 into both of the original equations. And if the answer comes up as correct, I know I've got accurate techniques. And this is a step that students often skip and they miss out on that opportunity to check their accuracy. Okay, let's have a look. We've looked here at this top one here. We've talked about this one here where it's about um, singular, not plural. What does it mean though when it's simplistic use of mathematical knowledge? How do you know um, if your not mathematical knowledge was simplistic or not? Because there's no use of complex here as there used to be under the old syllabus. Well, the word simplistic means easy to understand and deal with and use. It's not complex or complicated. It's not elaborate or artificial. It's a single or a basic aspect involving few elements, components, or steps. So if we go back here, the mathematical knowledge that we wanna demonstrate for an assignment needs to reflect all the aspects of the syllabus. Now, earlier on, I rattled off six or seven different aspects of bivariate data analysis, for example. Now, if I only do small parts of that, for example, I might skip the residual plot and I might skip any algebraic techniques and all I focus on is something that the calculator could do for me, then I haven't really demonstrated mathematical knowledge for important aspects of the task and I've only demonstrated the simple stuff, not the complex stuff. So we need to make sure we're getting into some of those complex components. Now complex doesn't necessarily mean hard or difficult. It does mean lots of different parts that are connected. Um, it could mean something that's composite, intricate, part of a bigger system. It can mean complicated and hard and difficult as well. So we wanna make sure that we are demonstrating those complex procedures that the old syllabus required us to come up with. We wanna still be dem demonstrating complex procedures in this. They're just go excuse me, going by a different name now. Okay, so here are some things to consider when you're looking at um, stepping up from simple to complex. First of all, think about all of the content you were taught prior to that assignment being handed out. If you're too, um, too intimidated by going and looking at the syllabus, that's okay. But think about everything your teacher did in class. 
go on to your teacher's OneNote if your teacher has a OneNote and look back over the weeks. They've provided you with lots of resources. They're probably expecting all of that to be demonstrated in your assignment. Um, so have a think about all of that content. That's what you're being assessed on. Think about how it was different to last year's syllabus. I would also say read your task sheet thoroughly. Don't just read it once, read it several times. Look for content clues because sometimes your teacher will tailor the flow chart for problem solving in the back and put little clues in there about the kinds of complex procedures they're expecting to see in your assignment. Um, also consider that you're not expected to demonstrate any knowledge from outside the syllabus. That's why it's a good idea to have a bit of a look at the Australian curriculum or at your Queensland syllabuses for senior um, because you're not expected to demonstrate anything outside of what is being um, assessed in the assignment. However, prior year knowledge can be considered a prerequisite. Now, let me give a little example of what I mean by this. So for example, let's say you're in year 10. In year 10, you're doing a statistics assignment. It might even be a bivariate data assignment in year 10. Now in year 10, all you're expected to do is draw a scatter plot and you're expected to discuss the correlation. And you might be expected to use technology like Excel to come up with that correlation. Now in year 10, residual plots aren't part of the syllabus. Neither um, is looking at variance. Neither is looking at um, extrapolation predictions by developing a model Y equals A plus B X. That's all year 12 work. So you're not expected to do that in year 10. However, you may be expected to draw on your year seven and eight and nine information like mean, median, mode, range, that sort of thing if you're in a year 10 assignment. So previous years, yes, you can be drawing on that. Future years, definitely not. Okay, and some of that prior year knowledge might not even be relevant to solving the task. So you might wanna consider that as well. If you're doing a bivariate data assignment, then drawing a box plot, even though that's prior year knowledge, drawing that box plot and talking about upper and lower fences may not be relevant for your bivariate data task. How much working? This is what students often want to know. Okay, first of all, note that your appendix is not marked. So if you do all of your working in the appendix, it's not marked and it's actually gonna hold against you because then you can't demonstrate accuracy if you don't show you're working. So make sure your working is in the body of your assignment, um, not in the appendix. Ask your teacher what volume of calculations they're expecting and where they expect to see it. In my class, I'm expecting to see at minimum a sample calculation in the body of the assignment, in the solve section of the assignment. So for example, let's say the assignment is a measurement assignment and they need to do multiple measurements in a garden to do a garden renovation. Now I'm not expecting to see area equals length times width for this garden bed and then area equals length times width for that garden bed and then area equals length times width for that garden bed. Um, I would be happy with one sample calculation of area equals length times width for a rectangular garden bed and see the fully work solution one time. So when I say fully work solution, I wanna see the formula, I wanna see a statement of variables, I wanna see substitution into the formula, I wanna see all the steps that it took to transpose the formula if that was required, and I wanna see the final answer. If there's multiple repeated calculations, I only want to see that once, but I wanna see that as the sample calculation. Then the multiple um, repeated calculations could be in the appendix and you could refer to it in the body of your assignment. See appendix one for additional calculations, but I definitely need to see one worked example in the body. Make sure if you're using Excel that you take snapshots of your Excel formulae and show them in the body of your report. The way you do this is on your menu at the top, click with the button that says formula, and then there's another little button that says show formula. When you click that, it'll actually show you on the screen all of the working. Take a snapshot of that, put it in the body of your assignment alongside the snapshot from Excel of the actual numbers themselves. And that's verification of your working. Also consider the use of words in working. So I find a lot of students will just dump a bunch of numbers on the page and as a teacher, I'm marking and thinking, what on earth are you calculating? Now, if for example, like with my garden example, I was calculating the area of garden bed A, then I would have a little heading that says, um, calculations for garden bed A, and then I would state the formula, substitute, etc. And then if I'm moving on to a different concept, maybe I'm 
um, finding the volume of a swimming pool, volume of swimming pool, and then the calculations for that underneath. So using words to explain what you're doing is really helpful. You could also consider putting some of your working into a table. Now you might have, for example, three sample calculations you want to demonstrate. You could do a table with three columns and put the working along there and that uses the white space in your assignment beautifully rather than it all being on the left hand side and flowing over multiple pages because remember you've got a page limit. So you could put your working into little tables um, or even into columns if there's like long um, proofs that you're doing you could have it running over columns and that way um, your white space is used effectively. I've also mentioned this already consider showing all steps of working. Have a look at how your teacher does their board work. Have a look on your teacher's OneNote for any examples that they're working through. That's what they're expecting to see you model as well in your assignment. Okay, let's look at some student examples and also some examples from the Queensland Curriculum Authority's um, exemplars on their website. And we'll talk about how this relates to what we've been discussing. So this is our first example. It comes from the general maths um, how to write a PSMT section on the QCAA's website from 2019. And this is part of a student's assignment where they're um, talking about the least squared regression line. They're introducing that as a formula, y equals a plus bx, and they're stating their variables. Um, and they're explaining what these variables are. Now remember we talked about words that link our working together. This is a classic example of how to do that. Um, and this formula is extremely relevant to solving the task. So being able to show the working um, for how you have used B and how you've used A to generate the general form of the least squared regression line and to come up with your own model in this particular situation is extremely important for solving the task. So any working that follows from here is important and that an important aspect of the task and this is the part where you really want to demonstrate your accuracy. Here's our second example, this is from a student. Um, they've just jumped into their sample calculation and yes, it was one of multiple of the same types of calcula um, calculations, but it's unclear what they are actually calculating here because they have not provided a formula. Um, so we're not sure if they're calculating the mean of two particular numbers, if they're looking for the median, a midpoint. It's really, really unclear as to what the student is working out in this statistics assignment. It also makes it very difficult to decide if that student's being accurate or even if they've hit an important aspect of the task. Because if, the, for example, the assignment needed them to calculate means and this was actually a median, then um, I can't determine if they've actually done the right thing or not. Um, so this might only achieve use of mathematical knowledge instead of accuracy. And especially if that's the only working that that student did in the whole of the body, then um, it's really hard to determine if they're accurate or not if I don't know what they're doing. So be really precise. Here's our next example also from the Queensland Curriculum Authority's website. It's for the first PSMT for general maths where they're coming up with the budget for an overseas trip. Now in this particular case our first calculation that they've done here using an online calculator is not actually correct. Um, it does not um, come to that value at all. So this part here would not hit the accuracy part of the marking scheme. But also, they haven't considered con um, that currency fluctuates minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day. And they've just used a single value, um, $1.84.46. And because they haven't actually considered that currency does change in value or fluctuates, um, that is a relevant consideration of the task, but they've taken a simplistic approach to this. So it wouldn't be hitting the top two boxes, it'd probably be simplistic. Okay, here's my fourth example from a general math student. Um, they have provided a table of calculations um, with various rounding levels. They've not provided any formulae. There's no working. There's no explanation of how they got these numbers. Um, there's no, you can see there's two data sets here. What's this data set versus what's that data set? Um, so there's absolutely no explanation there. There's no way I can verify if they are accurate or not because there's no working. Now, if this was done in Excel, for example, I would be expecting to see the Excel um, references to where they've calculated things from so that I could at least determine if they've done it appropriately in Excel, but I can't. So I definitely can't give a six to seven range for solve. Um, I would also be saying perhaps this is a simplistic approach. If this assignment was year 12 general maths, then variance um, range and interquartile range is really not part of the year 12 syllabus. So they've actually looked at simplistic aspects of the task. So it's not part of via, via value data. 
I don't think I could even award those top two boxes to them if that's the only calculations they're going to show me for this assignment. Um, so it would probably actually hit inappropriate use of mathematical knowledge, which is way down the bottom if that's the only work that they've done. Obviously, if they've gone on and they've done some other stuff, well, I would probably overlook this because it's really just not relevant. Here is another example of some um, work by a student in 12 general maths. Um, they've told me a formula using words, but remember when you're in your 12, you've got a formula sheet that's provided to you by the curriculum authority. You should be using the formula that is on your formula sheet for starters. But all they've done, they've called this a sample calculation. It actually isn't a sample calculation at all. It's a statement of a formula. They haven't actually shown me how to use the formula. And so that means there's no actual calculations that they've done in the body of their assignment. I can't um, verify accurate answers if I can't see steps of working. So that's a bit of a no-no. And also, once again, these formulae aren't really relevant for bivariate data. Yeah, the mean is I need that to calculate A and B um, to come up with my least squared regression line. But the median is not relevant in year 12. Even though it's prerequisite knowledge, it's not relevant to this particular task. So they've given me some sample calculations, which actually aren't calculations. They've written some formulae and they're not relevant. Um, so once again, this could probably be the inappropriate use of mathematical knowledge because that's not appropriate. And there's no accuracy that's been hit there either because I can't see any calculations of the things that are actually relevant to Year 12 General Maths. Well, I hope these worked examples today have helped you to understand a little bit better about how to solve correctly in your assignment. I hope they also have explained to you a little bit about important aspects of the task and what, how to better achieve accuracy of your results. Do stay tuned for our upcoming videos, which are going to go more into solve and best ways to do that. If you've got any questions at all about anything you saw in today's video, the best place is to email us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Um, please don't put it in the comments. It's very hard to explain in the comments, especially if I'm responding to you using a mobile phone. Much easier if I do it over email. Appreciate it. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day and that this has really helped you with your task. I'm Natalie McClutchy. See you later.